Thank you for being here. You all look terrific. It feels a bit unseemly, I must say, getting up here for an official uh, Q&A when you're all having such a nice time already, but uh, bar access is still possible. It's not one of those events where we shut that off while the speeches occur. Um, and uh, may I also say thank you, Contempo, um, and it's not a lowercase, ordinary, run-of-the-mill thank you. It's a big thank you in capital letters for the big artwork that we're standing under. Um, you know, public galleries don't just acquire art that already exists. They are measured, I think, by whether they make possible things that could not happen elsewhere. And Rally is such a work, and your support helped make it happen. And I think it's not every day that the work you support turns out also to be the place in which you celebrate having bought the work. Um, but so it is tonight. And there's no better homage to Nikki Savas than a fabulous celebration like the one you're having. Her own art, from small prints through to aircraft hangar-sized installations like this one, is itself always fabulous and celebratory. Uh, it's not art that says no or maybe, it uh, says yes. Now, some artists are not like their work, but that positivity, that generous energy, that yesness that you see in Nikki's rally is absolutely an emanation of the person herself. Um, she's an artist who I had, before coming to this gallery, always wanted to work with, and who I knew from my first email with her was one of a kind. Not only did she rise to this task, she rose to it fast, very fast, may I say, and rose to it gracefully, and left everyone associated with it with a, a, a glow of good karma. So we're lucky to have her here, and um, I'd better clam up and, and uh, ask her a few questions. So thank you, thank you for being willing to be asked some questions, Nikki. And um, I it's want very kind of you. Uh, very nice words. Thank you. It's quite. But a can word. I ask you a question? Whose idea was it to talk after a couple of drinks? <laughs> <laughs> I take no responsibility for what you got. How up, many have you before. had? Half. <laughs> you had how? How much? Half. Half. Can yeah, you a get? Can half. you get the man another one so we're on an even playing field? <laughs> Now, Nikki, we're standing here under a work that um, has been, it's been taken on so wholeheartedly by our public. We've had um, comments slips saying, you know, you mustn't, you mustn't take it off display. This thing should be here forever. Um, and of course, you, you were here. We were here early in the mornings. We were making it. But then you go away. Other things are happening in your life. The work is taken on by we viewers. How does it feel to come back in here and see this, uh, this thing you made after, after a few months? Because it's been up for a while now. Well, I, I actually, uh, it hasn't been a few months since I last saw it. Sorry to okay. let you know. I, I come in quite frequently <clears throat> to show various people around. But every time I, I do come in, it's a different experience. So it's not like revisiting an old work because the, um, the audience is, is always different. So this is a, an art street, and you get a different, varied audience that comes through. Mm. So, um, you know, and they engage with the work in a different way. And, and I really love the way that, that the, the audience plays off the work and the, the kind of, you know, uh, well, the, the environment changes. It, it can go from a bustling street to a, a, a space where, you know, contemplation and reflection sort of happens. So it's nice to see that, that changing dynamic. And when we first started talking about this space, I mean, it's a, it's a challenging space, no two ways about it. It's low ceiling, it's 60 metres long, uh, it has people flowing through it so you can't put things on the floor. What, what was it that seemed to you to be the, the most salient or... Um, uh, important things about this space and, and what sort of limitations did they place on you? What did you feel this space needed? Well, I, I thought, you know, the, um, any work that, that, you know, comes into this space, it needs to be a, um, a statement. So, um, you know, in, in, a, in a sort of like, um, in short, it's, it needed to be a, um, an entrance piece. And I wanted people to, people who you know came through the doors, I wanted them to see and experience something they they'd never seen or experienced before. Um, so that that was really important to me. And but because this is a thoroughfare, um, 
and there are a lot of events that take place, like, you know, tonight and whatever. Um, I thought you either do something to cover the floor or to cover the ceiling. And, and I went for the ceiling, and I want, but I wanted it to be something uncompromised. I wanted it to, to look like that it belonged there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I came up with a proposition of, of rally. And the basic component of, the, of, of, of your solution, although solution's far too sterile a word to, to call it, this, this great celebration that you've flooded through the space, is this humble plastic strip. I mean, it's almost worthless, the kind of material we see around all the time. Uh, really, two, two questions about that. How did you come to this material and this way of using it? And, um, and a corollary question, uh, why do you use? Why did you choose to use sixty thousand of those of those pieces? What is it about using so much of something that you love? So first of all, how did you come to the bunting? Well, it was um, from a research trip in Brazil, and I noticed that um, the streets were, were decorated with um, all these amazing street decorations <clears throat> in um, in celebration of Saint Days or FIFA World Cup or whatever. Mm. I mean, it's 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 universal, the the reference of and the use of of bunting. And why 60,000 strips? Well, I wanted, I wanted to uh, sort of um, create an active field of live colour. Mm. That's why. And you uh, trained as a painter and you still sometimes work as a painter. And of course, one of the, one of the little um, curatorial connections I relish is with our impressionist paintings in the room next door. Um, Camille Pizarro with all those little broken brush strokes. Is there a sense in which uh, you think of yourself as an abstract artist, an abstract painter, it's just that you're working on a much bigger canvas? Yeah, I mean, I, I, have, a, I have a serious interest in, um, in extending painting, um, uh, sort of um, transforming it somehow, taking it off, off the canvas and into a real active space. That's very important to me, yeah. Um, and in relation to, um, you know, painting, um, it's, it's about um, how, how do you, how do you um, transform painting without, um, and, and, still, and still retain the name of painting? Mm. You know, how far can you actually push it? Mm. Yeah. And, and colour-wise, what were you thinking? I mean, we go from a sort of rich, rich orange, we transition into, you know, uh, Granny Smith green uh, in this section, and then down into blue further on. Um, is it right to read landscape references into those? Do you want people's imaginations to be pulled in a particular direction by the colour? Well, you can if you want. That that's fine. And like you mentioned before, it kind of relates really well with the uh, the Pizarro painting of the garden just around the corner, just down there. Um, and that's fine. And, and I suppose you know when when the viewer uh, walks through the work, they become sort of active participant mm. um, in 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 the work. And um, as they travel through it, and in that kind of sense, it's like travelling through a landscape. So. Mm. And you do have like changing colours and, and changing sort of sensations as you do. Mm. It would be a great work to ride a bike under, not that we're allowed to do that, but you know, just to kind of glide back and forth through this space. And I, there was a lovely encounter in here the other day when there was, uh, there was a, a couple that obviously met for lunch and uh, one of them said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm heading off to the restroom for a bit, where shall I meet you? And she said, look, I'm just going to stay under this for a while. You know, there was a sense that she was, she was basking in the experience. But, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, I don't want to indulge in stereotypes or generalisations, but contemporary art can be a bit doomy, you know, it can be uh, a little dark, a little apocalyptic, and you, um, you do stand out, I think, among contemporary artists for, I guess what we could call radical positivity, you know, your work is always, it's just emanating this uh, perceptual energy, colour energy, um, a kind of outward uh, spirit. And to ask a... A dorky kind of question. Where does that come from? You know, where where does that energy come from? That's that's you know, very very kind, very nice words. That's so sweet. Thank you. That's but quite a um, <clears throat> I just I just do what I do. You know, I don't actually see my work in those terms. Hmm. 
and in that way, I just, you know, really, I just hope that, you know, that the work kind of means something to people and, and it resonates in some kind of way. Mm. And, um, yeah, that's, that's really all I can really say about that. <laughs> <laughs> and and do, do you see your work's purposes? I mean, what for you is the, is the, is the role of art in the world? I mean, is it, is, it out, is it out there commenting on current events or is it, or is it uh, as Matisse said, a, a chance for us all to relax into a, a sort of visual armchair at the end of the day and um, uh, remove ourselves from the world? What do you think? <laughs> I, I think it's one of those armchairs like you get in airports with the, uh, you know, where they pump electricity into it and give you a, a, a pretty good massage at the same time. Yeah. Oh, it's great <laughs> if it works for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when we look at abstract works and we've, and we've hung um, some great abstracts from the collection to complement uh, Nikki's paintings here, Bridget Riley over in the corner, a great... Stanislaus Ostoya uh, Kotkowska over there. It's a, a work that looks, uh, it's not plugged in, although it looks as if it is. And often a, a clue to abstract painting lies in the title. Uh, it lets us know a little bit more about where the artist is coming from. So could you tell us a bit more about the title of this piece, Rally? Rally, mm. uh, it, it, it's meant to um, invoke a, a notion of revolution. So, um, in, in every possible way, yeah. What kind of revolution, Nikki? Oh, <laughs> you need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, art revolution, political revolution, every, every, every kind of revolution. Yeah. And it's also a verb which I love to rally, you know, to get to gather your strength after a after a setback, and uh, and I think this is you know this is the gallery's front room. It's our it's our it's our doorstep. It's our um, it's our main street. So if if there's any place in which a public museum should rally its troops, it's 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 right here in the um, the entrance court. Well, so, how do you, how do you find the the name of the work then? I love it. It, it. it opens the work in, in, in a whole lot of directions. And I think, you know, I asked you that question about the political and social purpose of art. I mean, I think uh, colour, beauty, en energy, that sort of perceptual tune-up, they are forces for good. So I think this is a, this is a, this is a rally for colour. It's a rally for that sort of energy in these public spaces where we all get together and uh, agree to disagree in, this, in the space of the museum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've worded that a lot better than me because you've had less wine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nikki, I'm going to ask you uh, one, one more question, and that is, um, it's a kind of dream question. And, uh, you know, it's tremendous to have this work here, 60 metres long, filling the space. Even more tremendous that it's a work that stays with us, and we hope to see it play out in the spaces of um, uh, Sydney Modern in due course. But if you had all the time and money in the world, and uh, your choice of any museum in which to, to do your thing, where, where would you like to make y your next huge work and what would it be like? Wow. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to make something for the, the, the Tate Modern Turbine Hall. Yeah. And um, if I had uh, an open check, yeah? You do? Yeah. I, it would... <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Um, it would... It would be like nothing you could ever imagine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we, we have a few email addresses at Tate, and we'll see what we can drum up. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Nikki, and thank you all. Have a great night. Okay.